Hello, everyone, and welcome to Cellular Healing TV. I'm your host, Meredith Dykstra, and we have Dr. Daniel Pompa here, of course, and we have another Pompa here. We have Daniel Pompa Jr., two Daniel Pompas on Cellular Healing TV today. This is this is a lot of Pompa today. I'm pretty excited about it. How are you guys doing? Great. I'm excited uh, for the show. Good. Yeah. And now we have such a fun topic. What's that, Daniel? Yeah, great. Thank you. Woo, awesome. Well, so excited to have you here. And, you know, Dr. Bamba, you wanted to bring Daniel on the show for a while, and I'm so glad we're doing this because, Daniel, I remember meeting you a few years ago, and you've really undergone quite a dramatic physical transformation. I remember meeting you, and you just look like a normal teenager, and now you've you put on about, what, 20 pounds or so of muscle in just – the past year or so, it's, it's been really dramatic. It's, it's been amazing to watch the transformation. And I know you're going to share with us today a lot of the secrets with how you've you've gotten to where you are now. Yeah, actually, he put on 20 pounds this summer. Yep, since, actually, since May. In, end of in May. a year, how much have you put on? Oh, uh, in a year, I put on about 35 pounds. Yeah. And, and we actually, you'll see a, be able to see a picture from uh, when he was, you know, a year ago um, and then now today. And, uh, you know, the, the thing that I love about this show is for both of us, it's really about from, from sick to fit. And I didn't have the guts to show my picture. <laughs> but I'm close. I'm close to him, but he has passed me. Trust me, he has passed me up, which makes me feel really good. You know, but, um, you know, Meredith, I, I want to start with the sick, uh, you know, because that's where it started in. You know, I, when Daniel um, was a baby, you know, we started noticing diapers. Is it okay that I talk about you in diapers? I, I guess that's yeah, fine, yeah. That fine? Uh, You know, diapers. <laughs> <laughs> it was just this, it was diarrhea that started early on. And then, you know, just not really thinking much of it. And he was our first kid, so, you know, we didn't even know it was normal, really. And so, um, but then I, I realized that this is, you know, becoming more and more abnormal. And, you know, at a certain point, we had realized that he got the lead from his mom, and it was really literally causing irritable bowel. And so we, from the, you know, very young age, had to detox him. And as some of you know from my story, uh, his brothers as well. Uh, so even today, uh, Daniel is still detoxing. And I'll get to that in a minute, but this was, um, I'll show you some these are heavy metal tests. Now, that's mom, okay, where he actually got the lead. And wow. you, if you're it, listening via iTunes, you can see that it's the lead and the mercury are pretty much off the charts. Yeah, and the, the, the lead is just sailing off there. And then um, this is Daniel's, and I, I don't, you know, for the sake of years, these are just some of the things that, okay, there's lead, okay, and then this was, this was lead and mercury in 2013. Wow, so definitely some major improvements. And well, no, but the reason I show you this one is actually there was even greater improvements along the way. And I, I, don't, I have a book of these things, how many tests we've done, right? The reason I actually show you this 2013 one three years ago was because Daniel, we had cleared him of the lead, okay? And Diarrhea went away, you know, normal baby, thank God. Well, I wouldn't ever say you were normal. But, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, when he ended up with a, uh, a scholarship at a ski academy in, uh, in California near Lake Tahoe there, Sugar Bowl Academy, and he ended up having this repetitive injury. And we took him to the best chiropractors, best therapists, I mean, you name it. And it was just simply not healing. And it struck me, you know, as uh, someone's going through different time changes like puberty, the lead starts to come out. And Daniel at that time was, you know, starting puberty. And what happens is the bone starts to re uh, remodel, the lead being stored in the bone. Remember, the number one source of lead is from mom. And, and these tests show that, right? Mom's lead was high. It went into all of my children, actually. And therefore, um, you know, the, they ended up, with the high lead levels, we got rid of it, and then Daniel going through puberty, the lead came back out of the bone. And that's what this was out. And you notice the mercury was up at that point. 
you know, probably most likely just because the lead shut down his detox pathways and now he starts bioaccumulating mercury and lead. We dealt with that and then his injuries cleared up. And even before all the injuries, kind of looking at my life um, in retrospect, I thought that all these symptoms and things that I had was completely normal and I was living a normal life. But really, like, it wasn't until I started getting better, I was like, oh, like, that's not normal. Like, I can do all these things and still have energy. And, like, going to the gym isn't hard. Like, all these things mm -hmm. that I thought were so hard and, like, just normal activities yeah. became so much easier. Yeah, no, so, I mean, exactly. Daniel really um, didn't have the energy, I mean, even to get through a day, you know, which was yeah. a, another tip-off that, you know, the lead came back out. And, you know, it, you know, it's funny because in Marilee, um, you know, same thing happened. She started going through perimenopause, which is another transition where bone can remodel and you lose bone. And out came her lead again, uh, you know, and so she, she had to go back at it. So, um, you know, so anyways, I mean, that, that, that's his journey. And, I mean, he's still detoxing even now. Uh, he's not doing it as regimented. I, I mean, I don't have to do anything. I, when he was a lot younger, we were doing it for him. Uh, and I won't even get into those stories. But. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> some some uh, skeptical issues going yeah. on there. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> we, we were doing. I, I, you brought it. You brought it up. I'm going for it. Uh, you know, part of we were doing. You know, different things during the day. You know, different binding agents like DMSA, and then at night we, we were doing a suppository EDTA, so we didn't have to get up. So, in other words, we would wait till he falls asleep, and then we would do the suppository. I just but. totally embarrass him. <laughs> now he, he uses cyto detox regularly. So um, you know, and he knows now, you know, when he even has to detox. So it's out of my hands. Matter of fact, um, Isaac is sixteen, Daniel right now is eighteen. Um, and they both detox, you know, they know when to do it. They you know, they're they're on their own. <laughs> so yeah, right. it was really interesting as you were kind of saying before the show and with so many people who are, are detoxing regularly now, they're on a, a pretty strict regime of seven days on, ten days off, or they kind of have a, a specific time frame that they stick with. But Daniel, you were saying that you're just kind of in tune with your body now and you know when you need to detox. So can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, just, de I mean, honestly, in general, I'm kind of, I self-manage myself. Uh, even with, of course, my detox, I know exactly what I have to do and, of course, me having Dr. Pompa as my dad, I can ask questions here and there. But overall, I manage my whole own health life. He um, knows it well. Trust very me, well. Yeah. And even if it comes down to something I don't know, like I'll look it up and I'll do my own research. and You know, a little bit of him and me, I guess. Um, but down to the detox, um, I definitely know whenever I need to because I can just feel it like inside of me. Either I'll get really angry. I don't know why. Irritability, and, yeah. and I'm sure that's the mercury. Yeah. Or I'll just get start profusely sweating, and I'm like, I'm like, okay, I need to drink more water, and I'll drink more water, drink more water, and that's just my body telling me, like, hey, we gotta flush this out. So there's definitely different signs that I realize. Not, not, not to embarrass you, but odor, odor, yeah, that's one of them, and, and acne, yeah, and acne, yeah. hormonal acne, definitely, yeah. And then candida starts to build up. Candida starts to build up, which he unfortunately, like me, when I was, you know. Getting, I could never get rid of my candida until I got my heavy metals down to a certain amount. But, you know, similar symptoms like when, you know, when I, after I got my levels down, then I went to periodically detoxing. Same symptoms. I would get irritable. I wouldn't sleep as well. My, I would get more tired. Body odor, same things. Uh, you know, that I had the local, you know, candida building up, and I knew it was time to do a cycle. So, you know, the, the goal is always to educate the person on the process. And through the years, he learned the process very yeah. well. I have to say this because, you know, Daniel, like most people, started with DMSA and different things, and he, he had moved to, to Cyto. You know, some years ago, Cyto Detox, he was the first lab rat. I'm telling you. I can say this. Daniel, Daniel has taken more Cyto Detox than any human on the planet. I promise you. I'd say that's Yeah, that's, that's, accurate, that's accurate. Yeah, because he had literal, he picked up the first bottles. Remember that? Yeah. Literally, the first bottles. I didn't even see it. He went down to the factory and picked up the bottles where they were bottling remember, them. Yeah. yeah, and he took pictures. Yeah, they were really big bottles, right, in the beginning? Yeah, uh, no, it was just like, oh, the, the experimental bottles. Yeah, but they're actual bottles, you know, with a normal size. 
But I'm telling you, he he went high dose, low dose, frequent. And we, you, I remember in Atlanta last year, whenever he had the big bottle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a test bad. bottle. Yeah, yeah. He gave it to me. Yeah. And I was in the dropper. Yeah, that, was was even, like, that was two years ago. Yeah, yeah. was it really? Yeah. 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 Awesome. yeah, that was the first yeah. time I ever did Cyto. Yeah, yeah. It was forever. And then he has experimented with every dose, every amount, <laughs> frequencies. I mean, we learned yeah. so much about Cyto Docs from him. Yeah, we would well, a lot of people have you to thank then for their you know with for Slido Detox for being a lab rat. Yeah, he would go up to how many how much I, I went up to 35 drops three times a day. 35 drops three times a day, and it was creating like, it, it worked. It, I felt really good for three at first, days. Yeah, exactly. And then, He's like, I feel amazing. And then I, and I crashed. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Didn't last. Yeah. <laughs> so but then you know, then he went back. You know, the, the new one where he attached the vitamin C. We both feel you you don't have to use as much. Yeah, less. Yeah, less. Yeah, for sure. I feel it's more effective for me as well. I really like the new formulation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's definitely a few things in terms of my detox cycles and making them easier. Um, in terms of share, yeah. So for me, sitting in the sauna, um, an infrared sauna is really helpful. It helps pull out all the lead and all the stuff my body opens trying to up purge. another detox path. So after, like, if I'm having a rough cycle and I go sit in the sauna twice a day for like 20 minutes it'll really just like clear my head and make me feel so much better. Mm -hmm. So, um, and especially drinking a lot of water. Yeah. Like just in general, just drinking a bunch of water and keeping that pathway flowing, it helps so much. And then, you know, Daniel was one of the first ones that, where we realized, you know, because some people can take it two times a day. Um, many people, you know, three works well. Three works better eight than Eight hours, yeah. Yeah, and sometimes you take it more often, it seems like. Um, I found that eight hours is the best yeah, okay. way for me to take it, or I'll start pulling out too much. Every, every eight hours, so that's about yeah. three, three times a day, yeah. So just keeping kind of the levels up more consistently, you know, definitely seemed to work. And then, that, you know, that was repeated not just through Daniel, but through other people, too. But, you know, some people do just fine with two. Uh, you know, and again, it's just how fast people metabolize things, honestly. So if you're having trouble taking it, you know, increase the, um, uh, the um, uh, amount of time that you take it or how many times you take it. So any other points before we leave that topic? No, I think our detox is good. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you know, he does it. I mean, he does everything. I mean, okay, so detox. I mean, he does, you know, everything that we know about true cellular detox, you know, he's doing. I mean, he's... You know, keeps his gut clear. He keeps his pathways open. Um, you know, so he does many things to keep glutathione levels open. So back taking a SIA. I mean, so he does a lot of different things, you know. I mean, um, you know, all the things that we talk about. Diet, Meredith. Let's talk yeah. about diet. I, I got to start here. Right? Because people watching will say, okay, how did you get your kids to eat so well. Oh, I'll, I'll tell this story. Yeah, exactly. You will. <laughs> because it wasn't so easy, right? Of course, we raised them on a certain diet, and then we let go. And the let go place, well, you could talk about it. Yeah, I remember being a kid and like being deathly afraid of sugar. And like whenever kids would bring <laughs> snacks, I'd be like, oh gosh, all these kids are going to die like tomorrow. Like, I'm literally like, yeah. like, I was just like petrified. And then <laughs> around like sixth grade, I remember like, Kind of going out of my comfort zone and sneaking a few things here and there, and I was at school with my siblings, so like every once in a while they'd see me eating something bad, and they'd go and like, like I'm gonna tell dad on you, dad and mom. Yeah, we like, no. were probably the other way around. Too. Yeah, yeah. And I'd be like, please, please, whatever. Yeah, we both did it to each other, and it just went on and on. And then eventually, through Nazis, um, parents kind of relaxed over time, and they were like, you know what, screw it, like they're gonna eat it anyway. So, you know, at a certain point, we realized they just, they have to learn themselves. You have to learn, yep. What happened with that? So that, that didn't really get me very far. Um, started digressing and getting unhealthier. Yeah. It might not actually be getting unhealthier, but, like, my body just wasn't functioning properly. And, like, it came to a point in my life where, like, all I could do was just, like, hang out at home. And I'd sleep until noon or 2 o'clock, play video games, maybe get up and go do one or two things, maybe. Like, didn't even want to go hang out with people. Like, you know, just no motivation at all. And like that, you were saying, too, though, you thought that was normal. And that's so normal for so many teenagers out there. They, they just think that that's how life is. So many teenagers do think it's normal. And then as soon as I got, as soon as years went by of me, like, fighting this, fighting this, fighting, fighting this, eventually I went to go see Dr. Stephen Finney's um, yes. movie. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dr. Finney came into town, right? Um, and we interviewed um, his colleague, uh, Dr. Volek, on one of the shows. And I knew this was wise because I said, you know what, he's not going to hear it from me, right? So Dr. Finney came in to talk to the athletes. We live in this amazing athletic town who believes most of these people in a high-carb diet for athletes, right, especially endurance athletes. Well, you know, Dr. Finney comes in, the scientist who wrote and did many of these studies on fat-adapted athletes like Ben Greenfield, who we interviewed. And um, so he came in, and I knew to bring him here because he was smashing with evidence, scientific evidence, that you know, fat-adapted athletes actually perform as well or better, and here's why, blah, blah. So I brought him yeah. and Isaac, but he was a little older. So I'm sitting there through the movie, and I'm just like watching it. I'm like, oh, yeah, this is interesting. Never going to do it. Nope, like my food, you know? Sitting there like 100% confident that I'm not changing but it was interesting it was a good movie and then by the end of it I kind of was like a little bit inspired but not really um and then I kind of went to like still like pondering it at night you know and then just woke up the next day and was like you know what like I'm gonna do this like I'm gonna give it a try just like, like it just cut the thought kind of, it was planted yep yeah. Yeah, so Finney afterwards, you know, there was questions and answers, you know, and of course, you know, he was hammered, I'm telling you, he was hammered by like all these carb-addicted, carb, uh, I call them, athletes, and, uh, you know, and, and it was, you know, interesting uh, to see that. Yeah, but then um, once, <clears throat> once I gave it a shot, and even though I wasn't completely fat adapted one week in, my life started changing, you know, like everything became more clear, and all the crap and all the food I was eating before like was just out of my system I guess in a way yeah. and I started running off of cleaner energy um, and without even being in ketosis my life got better yeah and then once I was in ketosis it was like yeah you know it just he changed my Flip world yeah. Yeah. yeah and then you know then it you know got him detoxing more again and you're probably in and out of it again and all of a sudden I mean he was just that was it and what got you into the gym? I mean, something got you seriously into the gym yeah. at that point. And honestly, before I tried to be in the gym, and because I, energy. Because I, I just didn't have the energy, and I was insecure about me, my size because I didn't go through puberty reaction until I was 16. Like, full, like, Which is good. As we know on this show, it's good. You know, kids say it's 12. One thing that you know, predicts, how often do I tell you this? I would always tell them, look, the best predictor of how long you live is when you go through puberty. Yeah. The earlier you go through puberty, it literally chops years off your genetic life. And the later you go through puberty, your, your potential for living longer goes through the roof. So I always tried to motivate them with that. It didn't work because they just wanted to be like their friends. I mean, well, you know, let, let's talk about this because Daniel had major, major insecurities um, about being small. Yeah. And so did his, his brother Isaac. Um, because I, well, freshman year, after I got the scholarship to Sugar Bowl Academy, um, I was there and all these kids were all through puberty and I was so young. They were big, they were muscular, they had hair on their chest. Yeah. For I was alone and just young yeah. and I just didn't fit in and I was like kind of interested in girls and girls weren't interested in me. So it wasn't a great combination for being alone, you know, I was just like, and all the kids just picked at me because I was, you know, just yeah. smaller. Yeah. Yeah, and then, um, you know, then it happened. <laughs> you know, oh, he, yeah. puberty, he starts going to the gym, and then he starts going through puberty. And, and it actually wasn't until I got my diet on track that I was able to go through puberty because my hormones weren't able to respond. Yeah, yeah it made a difference. I mean, it, mm -hmm. I think he was, but he was going through it rough, honestly. Yeah. And then it just kind of smoothed everything out. Uh, acne changed. I mean, you know, everything that was going forward went straight there is no doubt about it yeah but um yeah so go ahead Aaron. well see yeah if we can just back up a little bit too so you know daniel when after you saw the movie and then you kind of woke up the next day and we're like okay i, I want to implement these changes i i want to change my life so what did that look like where did you start what did that first day look like and how has it progressed and changed uh a lot of google because <laughs> if i was like what's a car you know, I'm yeah, sure. I'm telling these things, but he had to learn for himself. A lot of people just, I'd say I'd, maybe I was out of, left out, but I didn't know what a carbohydrate was. So I literally had to, my dad told me I was like, so bread's a carb, and sugar's a carb. Okay, like you know, just confused. Um, but as soon as it started clicking, like I started making some minor uh, progressions, 
And once one thing fell into place, it motivated me to get a little bit like more invested into my health slowly, more slowly. You know, like I came, I came around with being more concerned about everything I was putting into my body and the things I was exposing myself to. Well, he saw the results. I mean, it's funny because he said, well, Dad, how do I do this? I said, simple, just, just keep your carbs under 50. What I didn't know is he didn't know what carbs actually were. <laughs> so he had to Google it. He would ask me. So uh, anyways, but yeah, I mean, it started to where he was just asking me questions every day. So I, I knew it was working. And then you know, Daniel inspired his younger brother, Isaac, you know, who was you know, two years younger at the time. And Isaac saw the results. I mean, Isaac saw you putting on like 10, 15, you know, 20 pounds of muscle. And then Isaac basically duplicated exactly what he did, went into ketosis and, you know, game over for Isaac too. So, yeah. You know. Wow. So Daniel, Daniel now weighs 165 pounds ripped and lean, you know, whereas I weigh 150. He passed me. I mean, wow. it was like, it was so funny. You told a story. Step yeah. it up, Dr. Pompa. <laughs> I know, right? Hey, I'm still ripped and lean. I mean, he'll tell you. I, I, but he just, yes, yeah. he is definitely ripped for his age. <laughs> but and, and for, anyone, for anyone, for that matter. I love that. <laughs> for anyone. I like that. That's exactly right. For anyone. I, 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 I guarantee I'm more ripped than his friends, right? Oh, no doubt. No yeah, doubt. No doubt. doubt. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Well, you both look fantastic. So you're doing something right, clearly. Yeah. Yeah, but, you know, he, he went, you know, through, through the process and, um, you no, know, he did. He started, you know, he started gaining muscle. He started getting stronger. But anyways, our conversation the other day was, he said, Dad, I, I never, ever thought I could ever be stronger than you, right? It's like we're bigger than you. And it was like that thing. I was like, that's hilarious, you know, that your, your son. Yeah. You know, your kids yep. Like, yep. Being little and looking up to, like, this god in the gym. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, I'll never be that. And then all of a sudden, here I am. There you yeah. go. That's pretty cool. What's the power of the multi-therapeutic approach as you teach? I, I hope this inspires people because we were both sick, you know? It's like, and I, I see the pictures on the wall, you know, all seven of those people in that picture were sick, actually. You know, and it's like, and it's from sick to fit, you know, to where, you know, now, you know, I am in, he is in the best shape of our, our lives. Yeah. And, you know, at, at 51, you know, and 18, you know, there's no doubt a, a 50 year old can be as fit. Well, not as fit as this cat, you know, but as fit as, you know, I'm more fit than any darn, you know, teenagers, uh, you know, out there, honestly. I mean, today, especially. Yeah, and you definitely got healthier before I did because I remember being in the gym and being younger and not, you know, healthy. I couldn't lift yeah. weights. Like, yeah. I literally was like, how can you push yourself to do that? Like, no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't get my like muscles to fire the way I wanted them to. So then something else happened with the diet, Meredith, and he, I talked to him always about intermittent fasting, right? And of course, he was looking at the bodybuilders that were eating five, six meals a day, right? And all the things, you know, forcing in the, the proteins and the meals. And I wasn't making an impact. So I showed him the video. I sent him the video of the Hodge twins, right? You know, yeah, they, they dropped some F-bombs, so don't send it to, to your kid unless you think they can handle the, uh, the language. However, uh, it worked because he saw these natural bodybuilder twin brothers just talking about how they were eating five meals a day and how they went to intermittent fasting where they were eating two and eating in about a six-hour window and how it transformed them, how they stay ripped and they both put on muscle size because how it raises up growth hormone, makes you more hormone sensitive. When Daniel started intermittent fasting, it was just dramatic. Uh, he immediately got shredded. I mean, vascular. And I, can you pull up the picture? I don't even know if you can pull up the before and after. Let's show that right now. And then we'll, right. Talk, we'll talk more about what he's doing. So I will pull this up right now, do a little screen share. If you're listening on iTunes, check us out on uh, YouTube so you can see the actual before photos. But let me, uh, let me pull this up right now. Hopefully that's coming through. Can you guys see that? That was exactly a year ago. One year ago. And, that, and I remember, he had already started working out. Well, I was well into working out. Oh, yeah. How many years? Maybe two years. Two years. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's a year ago. He, I mean, that's not the this, this, skid you know, His brother right on his left, that's little Isaac. Okay, so Isaac's gained, um, this is a year ago, so he's gained 20 pounds <laughs> since then. Um, and then there's Dylan Olivia on the other side. There's little Simon, and that's Papa. 
There's Pat Pat. Uh, this was obviously a birthday because she had this birthday hat. Oh, oh family oh, photo. It was a cake. But anyway, so Daniel right there was 20, more than that. Like you said, 35 pounds. Because he weighs 165 now. And so you weighed about 130? A little bit more. Okay, 135. 135. 135. Okay, so now show the, now show the after. All right. So we've got got your gym pick. Yep. That's my son there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the yep. so got he, both there. I took that of him yesterday. <clears throat> I wish I had arms like that. Yeah. Very impressive. Wow. We will argue whose abs are better uh -huh. because genetically, <laughs> I just think mine are better. Still, honestly, I just think mine are better. I do not have those arms. I promise you. <laughs> I think my shoulders are still better. I'm just looking at this picture. I, I, I really do. Yeah. So anyways, that, that's what my son looks like now. So there it is, before and after. Yeah. Dramatic. Wow. Yeah, dramatic. So wow. they well, want little things to make it happen. Talk know? about the little things. It's yeah. definitely in the process, and there's nothing. There's not one thing you can do that's going to change your life. Like if I just did a ketogenic diet, it's not going to get the results that I, I'm looking for. It's all in the process and the little things that I do. Um, Multi-therapeutic. I didn't even tell him to say that. That's exactly right. He's right. It's the, it was the detox. It was the, yeah. it was the, the intermittent fasting. Yeah. It was the ketosis. Talk more. Um, the intermittent fasting was huge for me um, because whenever I'm not eating, I, am like, I have so much energy. I'm laser focused, and everything comes together for me. So I literally – intermittent fast all day and whenever I'm getting done everything I need to do so in terms of working and meetings um, I'm in a fasting state and whenever I go to the gym I'm also fasting so I'll tend to go to the gym first thing in the morning um, that's the first thing I do and it really just sets my day up um, to feel the best and be able to focus if I don't work out I literally do not feel right throughout the whole day and everyone I people that work out I'd say can definitely Testify to that. There's something that happens with your endorphins and things that really just make you feel amazing. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so you're just drinking water in the morning, or are you having coffee? He has a, he has a little coffee now. Oh, yeah, I'll do, I'll do coffee. Um, I wouldn't necessarily call it bulletproof coffee, but I definitely do coffee. It's butter and raw cream. Butter and cream, um, or one or the other. So that definitely just like if I do that, I don't get hungry all day. It doesn't matter what time I eat. He takes his creatine. You always take creatine. I mean, I don't know if I want to give away everything that yeah, I do. I, I, he won't. Uh, I, I guess, I guess. ask about supplements because you got to give us some gems. What you doing? Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, what have we talked about on health TV? We've talked about the energy bits, so we can. He takes get those. He takes yeah. He does take energy bits. Energy uh, bits, recovery bits, and those are crazy helpful because I was always just pounding electrolytes all day and not Gatorade or Powerade and other things that people drink and nothing like zero carb with, you know, all the crap that kids. Yeah, Daniel ingest. had trouble keeping his electrolytes up. Yeah. The ketosis, uh, you know, different things in all the exercise and sauna. And he was constantly doing sea salt, potassium. The, the energy bits helped him. And in uh -huh. immensely amount. The energy bits, if I took the, I mean, the recovery bits actually, only for the electrolytes, it would be a win because I feel like I get the full spectrum of electrolytes that I need. Yeah. Um, I love so, the recovery bits too. They're amazing. It takes a pre-workout, which is basically nitric oxide stimulators, right? You know, um, you know, nitric oxide um, is gives you the full pump when you work out. Yeah. And there's natural amino acids, citrulline, arginines, and other things in there, uh, niacins um, that actually cause that nitric oxide boost. And why is that important when you're working out? Is it brings the blood into the muscle. Yeah. So it really helps. The only two or three main things are the energy bits, caffeine, and then the nitric oxide. And if you take those things, your workouts are so much more effective. Pre-workout. And then sometime after workout, I mean, he'll let it go for an hour because, like you said, I mean, he likes to get the growth hormone spike by exercising on his stomach. And then he'll just do some, you know, whey protein, which absorbs quickly. And then an hour or whatever time after that, you eat a meal. Yeah, I mean, usually – I'll, if I'm working out first thing in the morning, ideally, um, and then I'll go do the work that I need to do and like meetings and things like that. Um, and I'll literally wait until two, three, four, uh, just depending on the day until I actually do that initial protein. Um, and then I'll break my fast at that point. 
and then I'll wait, you know, 45 minutes, and then I'll start actually eating and making sure that I'm getting the full calorie. Oh, well. he eats me out of house and home. See, here's the difference. This is, I want to point out a difference for people watching because some people are just trying to regain their health back. Some people want to go to that level of performance, right? Well, you know, if if you're just trying to gain your health back, you're not forcing calories in, right? I mean, in that eating window, whether it's six hours, eight hours, four hours, whatever it is, um, I don't force the calories in, right? I mean, I, I'm not hungry all the time. I'll just eat typically a smaller meal during the day and then a big dinner. But he eats in that window of eating. If it's six hours or four hours, he eats. I mean, I'm telling you, he eats the whole time, which is that, but that's what it takes to put on that type of muscle. Yeah, and, yeah. I, and I wish I literally incorporated it into my schedule on my eating because it takes that much time to literally sit down and just eat. Like, it's yeah. actually, it's a time commitment. But then again, I'm not eating all day. So all that time where you'd be trying to get snacks and make meals, like, I don't have to. So I'm way more productive throughout the day and focused. And then later at night, I'm just like just eating and eating and eating and eating. So, I keep telling him, don't eat so late at night. Start your right. window a little earlier. And I have been. It's been yeah, a difference yeah, in my yeah. sleep. So. Yeah, exactly. Right. Well, so what are you eating during this window? Just give us some ideas. Oh, gosh. All right. Well, lots of meat. Um, I'll have lots yes, of fat. Lots and lots and lots. More fat than I would meat, obviously, because I'm burning fat all day. Um, so I'll do a, like a plain yogurt, and there is carbohydrate in there, but a lot of it, yeah. it's good. It's good carbohydrate that doesn't actually transfer to glucose yep. uptake, right? He could probably tolerate even up to eighty grams of carbs, <clears throat> maybe a hundred on his yeah. big workout days, and still stay in ketosis. Yeah, right? so it's different. But you probably still don't even get that much. No, I, I see. I, I see what he eats. Yeah. You know? So and then I eat a lot of uh, you know cheeses, mm -hmm. um, nuts. Nuts are great. Uh, vegetables. Uh, yeah, Daniel see. never ate vegetables. No. He hated vegetables. Now, now he eats big salads. And, oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Avocados are probably he the best um, in terms of getting the full spectrum of fats and all that. Um, what else? Um, I, I'm not a very – I don't prepare food ever. Um, I'm not one of those. So I just eat out of the refrigerator, and sometimes I'll pull up my chair and just sit there and just eat. Straight. I, I literally caught him doing that the other day. He literally had a chair <laughs> at my refrigerator with the refrigerator open. <laughs> and he had a chair in front of the refrigerator. Imagine this. I mean, it's like – and then the other maddening thing about this child is he leaves everything out. He just walks away. Well, that's why I'm in front of the refrigerator so I don't leave everything out. So he is very convenient. He's thinking of you, Dr. Pompa, when he does that. Really. It's just kind of him. I mean, I, you know, eggs are all – I mean, eggs in oh. this house, man, they just – they're gone. Yeah. I don't even really know what happens to eggs, you know. But, you know, I mean, he eats a lot of variety of meats. I mean, you know, he, he, chicken. Last night we had amazing salmon. Um, you had a meal before that. What was your meal last night before the salmon? Um, oh, I ate all day before that. I went to a little cafe with, um, <coughs> with you know, salads. Cafe. Yeah, salads. And then I got a big soup with a bunch of different vegetables. Um, no grain or anything like that. But I'm, I don't really count – the carbs as much in the vegetables and things like that as maybe somebody that's more serious um, would. Well, someone that's not putting out the energy output. I, are, yes. Yeah. I guess my body utilizes it much more and I can stay in ketosis with eating as many vegetables, as many nuts and things like that as I want. But now I never go out and just eat sugar like, oh, I'm going to get my 50 grams of carbs today. I'm going to have a licorice stick. You know, I don't do that. Um, I definitely – just stay away from grain and sugar almost completely, and I'll focus on more and just the nuts and vegetables and things like that. Yeah, he, he, you know, he, he, he wants some of your recipes, Meredith. He keeps saying, "Why doesn't someone around here make these healthy things?" You know, like Meredith does. You know, <laughs> uh, yeah, I said, I'll cook for you for a little bit so you don't have to sit in front of the refrigerator, Daniel, you know, because that's that's really, I mean, that's very funny. But you know, I'll come help you out a little bit. Oh, that'd be great. <laughs> Now, do you eat fruit? Do you eat berries? What do you do for carbs? And uh, and actually, do you do carb days and protein load days? I wanted to talk a little bit about diet variation. Well, I can do a little bit of berries. Um, you can't overdo it. I've done it. You don't want to do that. <laughs> um, so, yeah, a little bit of berries here and there, maybe my yogurt or just like a small container. Um, but, yeah, uh, that's about it in terms of the berries. I Definitely no fruit, no like bananas. People are like, oh, potassium, no. 
Every, well, every once in a while, I've seen him cut an apple and take a thing of almond butter and put it on the apple. So yeah, but uh, I do that too. I do that too. But um, it won't be like carb days or protein load days. Yeah. You kind of it. variation is he does it one or two days a week. One, uh, I work on a six day cycle, so I'll do it once every six days. Um, yeah, and I will just eat all day and as much as I can, and I don't eat whatever I want. You don't do that. Um, I learned my lesson doing that. You before. tried that. You tried that. I did. I was like, ice cream, cannolis. Yeah. <laughs> no, like, you know, bad, just bad food. Yeah. Yeah, and that didn't work out. I had a lot of cravings um, for the next, like, three days. And for me to go back into ketosis, it was a lot harder than if I ate cleaner. Um, but I do notice if on my carb days, like carb days, I eat more healthy carbs like um ancient grains a lot more ancient grains and just uh like non-gmo all of that it definitely pays off in the way i feel the next day and if i abuse it then i end up puffy candida builds up and the sure. carb day was a complete waste because now i'm playing he tolerates it less than me honestly i mean i'm down the road and detox much further than him i mean it's like I could eat uh, a pizza and the next day feel normal. Uh -uh, not yeah. him. On the carb days, I really just focus on eating as much as I can all day. So I'll wake up, and that's the first thing I do is just start eating. And it's really important. Like, I don't know. I'd probably say. He's, honestly, he's kind of miserable those days. Yeah, I am. Because I'm, yeah. tr I'm trying to get about, I'm, if I can, ideally, like five to 6,000 on that day. Wow. Which is like calories. Nobody can eat that much. I mean, I, like, unless you were really. A lot of food. Yeah. Right. So. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of unrealistic for a and, lot of people. And for those people that are new or watching, the reason we do it, I call it diet variation, is because when the body in ketosis um, or just in even intermittent, you can think it's starving. So we want to f feed it so it knows the abundance is there. And therefore, your body continues to burn fat for energy very efficiently. Otherwise, it will start to blunt the insulin receptors and store fat, even eating perfect. So... It's a way of staying really lean and hormone sensitive. So diet variation. You know, let, let's talk about exercise variation because they're going to want to know, like, what's this guy doing? Right? We're going to get all these emails. So what's it? Talk about your week of exercise. Um, and you won't want to give it all away, right? It's like, Definitely not. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the idea is the his friends watching. That's what it's worried about. He's worried about his friends watching. They, go, they follow him around going, like, what are you doing? Yeah, I, I have about five texts a day. There are three to five texts a day from just, like, kids that I know. And I'll just text me, like, like, what happened to you? Like, what are you doing? Like, send me your workouts. Yeah. You know, I'm like, why should I do that? Yeah, he's like, <laughs> now I'm not telling them that. I used to tell them everything. It's like, and, and they didn't listen anyway. Now I'm not telling them. Yeah. Anyway, so tell, them, tell my people your workouts. Your friends are. Send them this show. <laughs> All right. Tell them this show. All right, my workouts. So, uh, yeah, like I was saying, I run on a six-day cycle, um, generally. And every six days after that cycle is completed, I go through every muscle group. Um, you, you know, explain that. So in other words, give an example. Let's say Monday, what body? All right, Monday, the generic, um, how everyone does chest day on Monday, right? Okay. So chest and tries on Monday. Okay, this is called a split routine. So instead of doing all the body parts in one day, he splits them up so he can really, really fatigue them and wipe them out. Go ahead. Right. So I'll do chest and tries on Monday. Um, Tuesday, back and by. Thursday, legs. Um, mm -hmm. Every leg muscle. Um, so wait, Wednesday, book a day off. Yeah, sure. No, um, okay, well, you said Monday, Tuesday. Dyslexia is getting the best. Yeah, right Monday, now. Tuesday, Monday, chest and tries. Tuesday, I mean, and buys. Yeah, you can you can separate it out however you want. Um, All right, best, well, tell me what you're doing. The best way is to uh, go opposing muscles. Um, you know, either by try. Um, what, what, what did you say? I'm not screwing you up here. I thought you skipped Wednesday. I, I did. I definitely did. Okay. Right. Um, <laughs> but, I mean, we really have to go into this? He doesn't want to say. This is not crazy. <laughs> All right. So, I'm doing maybe you know, what you said. And every, you Wednesday, you take a day off or do smaller muscles. Right. Okay. Thursday, what do you do? Um, shoulders, traps. Okay. Shoulders, you know, and traps, which is part of shoulders or back. Okay. And then Friday, what do you do? I mean... Legs. Oh, we said legs. I mean, you know, I don't really like plan it out like this. Okay, he, he rotates it. Anyways, he rotates the muscle groups. Now you're talking yeah. about lifting weights for yeah. these specific areas. Okay. Lifting weights for those specific areas. Like I have it written down in terms of like a general idea on what I do, 
in terms of but like, you separate. what muscle groups, but I separate it out. So I don't lift the same muscle until six days later. So I give my muscles time to rebuild. Yeah. And, I, and on those days that I'm actually working out, I work the muscles to complete an absolute failure. And like ultimately high intensity until you literally, like there is not a chance you can hold it for one more second. Right. Like not only like I can't get one more rep, like if I can't hold it anymore. So it's really important to do, and I do nine to 12 sets uh, for big muscle groups. And then if I'm doing something like chest and try, I'll do probably about four to six sets on triceps after I've already worked my chest. And then I will do every set, not including warm up sets, to absolute failure. Yeah. And then the other thing is, is that he varies his reps, um, which, right. you know, Chris Zeno, who we interviewed, right? He just won um, Mr. Universe. Uh, he taught uh, Daniel to vary his reps. So it's even more workout variation where, so one week on all of the body parts, he'll do 60 to 80 reps. And then maybe the next week in that cycle, he'll do 15 to 20 and then maybe six to 10 on the, the third time week. So, yeah, and I've started doing that and it's been actually working uh, pretty effectively in terms of getting more sore, which is definitely my goal every day. Like if I'm not super sore, I'm, I'm pretty upset. So I, it, it shocks the muscle is what it does, just like diet variation, right? It forces adaptation, which makes us stronger as long as you're doing all this nutrition to help adapt, right? And he knows that. Everything is about rest. Everything is about recovery. Because you're doing these little variations, just like we do with the diet, to get the body to adapt. But the body has to recover for that adaptation. And that's where you become stronger. So you become stronger resting at home, not in the gym. That's what yep. taught mm -hmm. him that. Yeah. And if I'm not fully recovered, I would never lift a muscle again because then it, the workout becomes compromised. Most definitely. Yes. Yeah. So, so what now, about cardio? Bring that in at all? Yeah. Um, I, last year, I did a lot cardio um and this year i'm trying to do more um especially because i'm going to be skiing again so you need to start more of that again. yeah so but my, my cardio is decent for not really doing it a lot um but it's definitely super important and i notice whenever i do a lot of cardio um i definitely get leaner and more vascular yeah because he's he is well here's what we did the other day we went on a 15 mile bike ride and okay. mountain bike ride and um he didn't eat all day so imagine 15 miles at four o'clock. You know, he was literally, he's fat adapted. So during that 15 miles, he didn't eat. So what was his body burning? Pure, you know, he's literally burning pure fat. So imagine we went 15 miles up in the big mountains too. And this is at four o'clock PM. Yeah. So I didn't eat. Yeah. So this is the last day. Right. So, I mean, you talk about, you know, his body, you couldn't do that unless you were fat adapted, meaning that his body was able to efficiently burn that fat. He never bumped, you know, so uh, you remember, it's funny because we came up to a place and there was a bunch of other bikers there and every one of them were drinking sugar drinks in bars. Did you yeah, see that? Every single yeah. Time. And I'm thinking to myself, they probably just bike six miles and not, and they're sugaring up because, you know, they're trying to bike another six and, you know, here he is. Now I had eaten one meal that day before that, but typically I do the same thing. Uh, you know, fat adapted, I'm able to do those types of, uh, therefore you get the more fat burning out of endurance, which typically, you know, it's not the case. Such a win-win, such freedom too, when you're not reliant on constantly having to feed yourself to have energy and to live your life. Yeah, and it's true, and it makes it easy if you do forget, it's like, oh, just diet variation, you know, so I forgot to eat today. It's all right, I'll do a 24-hour fast, no big deal. I mean, it's really, it honestly is, it's people think it's like inconvenient, but I find it very, very convenient. Yeah, totally the opposite. My busy days are the days that I don't eat. I don't want to eat, and I just laser focus, you know, all day. So, but you can't after you do fast for those long periods. You have to eat, or it's just not going to work for you. Yes. Yeah. Don't eat less. Yep. Eat less often. <laughs> That's, yeah. that's the bottom line. Yeah, that, that's such a good phrase. And that's so easy to remember, too. I think that that's just that's such a, a good uh, mantra to, for as a take home point for listeners. So don't eat less, eat less often and eat the right things, obviously, too, within the multi therapeutic approach, if you want to really go for it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So well, there you go. So uh, so proud of him, you know, I mean, just uh, he's skiing again this year. And 
Um, just, you know, amazing student. And uh, he's going to be a world changer. God's, uh, God's brought him a long way. That's right. Long really way. Has. Yeah, no, no uh, doubt about it. With that being said, too, I'm curious. So, Daniel, what are your future aspirations? You've come so far in your journey, yeah. your health, and your life. What, what do you want to do with all of this? Um, I'm not too confident uh, in one thing yet, but I am working with um, somebody in private equity that's training me on all of his modules um, in terms of what it takes to build a successful business, um, which has been really cool, um, considering he's actually teaching me everything on how to do this, and it'll transfer over into everything in my life. Um, so it's definitely not going to be a waste of time, but it seems like a really good opportunity in terms of definitely figuring out kind of what I want to do. He actually literally put his college on hold. Uh, for a year to do this, which I was really proud of that decision, actually. Um, you know, today I'm, I'm, you know, not a believer that college is necessarily been the best thing. Although, I mean, he can, he can go whenever he wants. But this, uh, he's literally learning uh, the, the gentleman that takes these students through actually how to evaluate a business, how to purchase a business, or at least equity in a business, how to manage it, um, you know, to increase, you know, the profits and, I mean, my gosh, I, the stuff that he's learning, you know, it's, <laughs> if I'd have known that at his age, oh my gosh, I mean, I, you know, I knew nothing, you know, I, this diet stuff that we're talking about, like, I, again, I knew nothing, you know, dang it, I could have looked like him, you know, it's like, you know, when I was his age, you know, what the heck was I doing? I don't know. I, I sure, I didn't know this. Yeah, and it's definitely super cool because I'm actually working with real businesses and it's, it's real life, so. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, sounds really exciting, and I can see your dad is so proud of you. So it was just such an honor to have you on the show and to share some of your gems. I know you didn't want to give it all away, but thanks for giving us a lot of great information. That you know, a lot of amazing take-home points for people watching, and all of you know what you've been through from pain to purpose. You know, this is just—it's an awesome message to share and how the multi-therapeutic approach works. Once again, Dr. Pompa, case in point. Yeah, yeah. From pain to purpose, from sick to fit. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's a good thing. I really could do a show and interview each one of my children, honestly, because they, they all have an amazing story. Imagine Simon on the show. Oh, gosh. Oh, He's God. not there yet. Yeah. Oh, God. We're, yeah, <laughs> that would be a comedy show. But, I mean, if somebody took the information that we've given during the session um, away and they did everything that we've talked about, in six months – they would realize like massive change. And even in a month, they realize like how much they've actually changed. It's, it's honestly remarkable how much you can just really benefit from this, these things and how much muscle you can actually put on or how great you can look. Yeah. How much better. You just well, have to do it. <laughs> you have to do it. The information is there. Yeah. Well, well said. That's a perfect way to end the show right there. Awesome. Well, thank you both. This has been an awesome information packed show. I know I learned a lot as usual. I know all of you who are watching and listening, I'm sure gained a lot of value as well. So have a wonderful weekend. Thanks for tuning in. And thanks again, Dr. Pompa and Daniel. Look at these arms. Like, look at that. Gosh, look at that. Dude. Make your show those abs all right, one we'll time. Let's see those abs. Look, right? Yeah, look at that. There we go. The pictures did not lie. It's a real deal. <laughs> I still have them. I'm just more modest. I'm a little embarrassed. You know, you know how that is. <laughs> we'll get you there sometime, Dr. Pompa. <laughs> All, right. All right, everybody. Hey, thanks, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. Yeah, Bye-bye.